One of my friends had seen the metal roses that I've been making recently and he asked me if I could perhaps make a bunch of tulips for his wife. Well, I think tulips are more of a technical challenge than roses, but I've had a, a brief look and I've made a, a couple of prototypes and I believe that it can be done even by somebody with my limited ability. So hopefully at the end of this video we'll end up with a bunch of tulips, but I'm not making any promises at the moment. I'll start by showing you everything you're going to need for this project so that you don't uh, get halfway through and then find you don't have all the bits you need. First thing you're going to need obviously is some copper. This is 26 gauge copper or 0.45 millimetres. I don't know what that is in inches unfortunately. This bit is uh, 12 inches square and you should be able to make at least three uh, tulips plus leaves from that. From the stems you need some 1 8 inch copper and for mounting the petals onto the stem I use a very small piece of 3 8 copper rod. Now you're going to need a template to cut out the petals. This is the one I use. You can either cut it out from card and then draw around it with a sharpie or I just prefer to print them out onto label stock and stick them directly onto the copper. This copper supplied comes with a plastic coating on it which is very useful to prevent it getting scratched while you're cutting it. You're going to need some tools for cutting out your template. Now if you're really good and know what you're doing, unlike me, you can use these which are called Tinman snips. I find them a real pain to use so uh, I don't bother. An easier alternative are these. These are called aviation snips and you can get them in uh, three types. These ones which are for cutting curves to the right, these which are for cutting curves to the left and lastly some which are for cutting straight lines. Now I bought all three of these as a set from eBay for about £8 but after I'd made a few roses I found that they were beginning not to cut very well. So. What I've done now is invest in some of these. These are look very similar, and they are aviation snips. They're made by a company in the US called WIS, and one of these costs more than all three of these. But I can assure you they're well worth the extra money. But whatever cutters you need, you find that you won't be able to cut right into this area here with the snips. So you need to finish it off with something like this, which is a a jeweler's saw. It may not even show up on the picture but there's a very fine blade in here which you can use hacksaw style. We're going to need two heat sources because we need to anneal the copper to make it soft enough to work and also we need to solder the various parts of the tulip together. For annealing the copper you need to get the whole piece of sheet red hot so you're going to need propane torch of some sort and for soldering you'll need a soldering iron. Now this one is a 300 watt version which is probably a bit of overkill for us but you do need to be able to put a lot of heat into one place quite quickly so I would recommend at least a 200 watt iron. The bit that came with this is this which is slightly overkill even for us so I made my own bit using a piece of the 3 8 copper rod. If you don't have a soldering iron you might be able to get by with one of these. This is a miniature gas powered blowtorch. Gives you a nice pencil flame and it's refillable using a gas lighter refill. Oops, just gone out. The trouble with these is you need to be very careful that you don't overheat the copper because if you do it will discolour then you need to repolish it and that's not very easy to do once the flower has been formed. 
Your copper flower will discolour during the forming process so you're going to need to repolish it on occasions. It's easy to do using just uh, fine sandpapers, finer grades of sandpaper and uh, hand power but it's very tedious and long winded so most people will want to use a power tool. I've been using this one for a long time, it's a very cheap supermarket model but it's mains power at a variable speed and seems to last very well. I do have a Dremel tool but I have to say I hardly ever use it. This one is battery powered and I find it doesn't have enough torque for much of a um, performance and if you press too hard it will stall then you need to reach start the whole thing. I recently acquired this and I find this is probably the best thing I've had so far. This is what's called a pendant motor and a flexible drive. It's uh, cheap variable speed I think I paid about £20 for it in uh, Little, one of our German supermarkets which are very popular over here in the UK and it works very well OK, let's have a look at uh, some of the other specialist tools you'll need if you're already into uh, copper forming or tin plate forming you may already have something called uh, a dapping set. I don't have a dapping set so I can't show you one but I can show you a picture of one. You don't actually need it to make a tulip. You can make do with some other things that you're likely to find in the kitchen. One of the things you'll need is a teaspoon, ball pane hammer, and a set of measuring spoons, steel measuring spoons, plastic ones won't be any good as you'll see later and you really need the quarter or half teaspoon one. Finally you will need one of these, this is called a, a spoon dolly and it's sold by um, jewellery manufacturing stores, um, jewellery accessories and so on and it's for forming spoons hammering copper or sterling silver on the top and I'll show you how we're going to use these things later on you won't be able to get right into the middle with the tin snips so you have to finish off using a jeweler's saw This is a pretty tedious business so you might as well go off and do something else while I'm doing this. Yeah, it didn't really take long, it's just that I've got six of them to do so I'm moaning a bit. While cutting out you can uh, make yourself one of these, I'm sure the jewellers have a fancy name for it but I just call it a bit of wood with a notch in, it makes it easier to rotate while you're cutting and so on. So here's the first flower cut out and uh, cleaned up with a power file. One of the downsides of using aviation snips, and I'm not sure you can see it on here but I'll show you a magnified picture later, is that one surface of the copper sheet will have a slightly knurled edge this is due to the gripping surface of the uh, snips themselves. Um, you can take it out with a file or when you're folding the flower make sure that the knurled part is on the inside and then it won't show anyway. And if it does you could always tell your client that that's a, a feature of nature. Here's the obligatory health and safety notice because I don't want anybody to sue me. If you're going to drill the central hole in your petals, do hold the blank in the hand vise or at least some pliers because if the drill picks up on this and you're holding it in your fingers you'll very soon have um, blood flowing all over your nice copper sheet.
This is probably the shape that most people think of when they hear tulips. The classic bowl-shaped, almost closed flower. But uh, if you bring up tulips on um, Google Images, you'll find that uh, there are hundreds of variations on the basics, six uh, petal patterns, mainly in the way these ends are finished. So we're going to do the similar thing because I'm making a bunch of six. I don't want them to be all the same. So some of these have got just rounded edges like so and this one which has rather larger petals I've just shaped it into this sort of classical heart shape on the end but whatever you do providing it really looks vaguely like a tulip or an impression of a tulip then that's fine I mean after all Van Gogh's sunflowers don't really look much like sunflowers in my garden but he got away with it so so can we Okay, let's get on with some annealing. You need to get the petals to a dull red heat. Just to keep the lights fairly dim for this so you can see the colour develop. Beginning to go now. When you've annealed your flowers, you'll find that your nice shiny copper flowers have gone like this. This is called fire scale and it's oxidation of the copper due to the uh, oxygen in the air and the action of the flame. This has to be removed of course, uh, either by polishing or you can start and remove some of it by what's called pickling, which is immersing it in a solution of citric acid, something around 50 grams per litre. Uh, works quicker if it's hot and also better if it's agitated. So let's try it in this citric acid bath. Okay, that's 10 minutes in the pickling bath. Let's see what we have. Rinse them off in clean water. There we go. Most of the file scale is gone. This will still need polishing of course, but it's going to be very much easier than if we didn't do the pickling. Right, now we need to polish our flowers before we form them. In the past I've used this um, flexible drive with these little um, felt brushes that go on there in conjunction with some sort of metal polish paste and this works very well but it's extremely messy and certainly don't wear anything that you want to wear out afterwards when you're doing it and also if you don't wear glasses get yourself some safety glasses because this stuff does go everywhere I recently got these which are little um, cylinders of silicone rubber which are supposed to be impregnated with different grades of abrasive and the advantage of these is that they don't need any external polishing medium so they should be a lot less messy. I have tried them briefly and I must say I wasn't very impressed but I will try them again later and let you know how I get on. Meantime let's get on and uh, polish these in the conventional way.
bit of polish on there. Spread it around so that it doesn't spread itself around. Okay, so this is getting there, it's by no means finished, but uh, this is a tedious business, but it's worth doing well because this is going to be the outside of the flower. Now of course, you don't need to polish the inside as rigorously, but it does need uh, a slight touch or it'll look pretty awkward. Alright, there's the first one ready for forming. Now do bear in mind what I said before, that uh, it's quite difficult to do any polishing once the flower has been formed, so get it as good as you need it to be at this stage. <laughs> 